What's up guys? Let's talk about my Juki. I really don't think there is anything I get more questions about than uh, industrial sewing machines. So I'm gonna go over my machine and see if I can answer some of the questions. Let's get to it. This is a basic introduction for the Juki LU-1508N. All right, you should just call it a 1508. So just like most machines, it's got two spots here for your thread cones, which is really handy because then you can have one set up to wind up your bobbin and uh, one just for regular sewing. This machine is a little bit modified. Let's should come down here and you can see that big black pulley right there is called a speed reducer. It basically does two things for you. One, it slows the machine way down. And two, it adds more torque so you can get through that thicker leather. One of the downfalls of having a reducer on this machine is that this belt is coming straight down, wrapping around that pulley, and then there's a smaller belt that wraps to the motor. The reason that's a problem is you're not able to rock the machine backwards like you can with most machines. That's what these hinges are for right here. And uh, normally you'd be able to kind of push up on the machine and rock it back just so that you can have access to everything underneath. So that's the one downfall of having a reducer. You can, of course, get access to it. You just have to stand on that side of the machine, grab from right here, kind of put your knee up against the table and just lift up on it backwards. And uh, that way you'll be able to slip that belt off and you should be good to go. So if you're going to be using this machine to sew the type of work that we do, um, I would definitely recommend buying a reducer and I'll put the link to it in the description. I got it from eBay. Okay, some of the important adjustments you can make on this machine. This is thread length. Uh, as far as I know, these numbers are basically arbitrary. I usually keep mine at about four. This is the presser foot tension adjustment screw. So you just loosen up that bottom locking nut right there. And then uh, if you're working with leather, I would recommend backing it all the way up till it's as far out as it can go. It's on the last couple threads and then lock it in because you want as little pressure from the presser foot pushing down on your leather. So when it comes to the bobbin, all machines are different. Some of them load from the sides, some from the bottom. This one loads from the top and uh, you remove this plate. Oh, by the way, the previous owner that had this machine decided to cut the plate in half. I have no idea why makes it a pain to remove, but. Okay, so the way that you thread this machine, you start at the thread cone, you go up through this first loop and down to this metal piece right here. Then from here, I'm gonna take the thread and go from the top through the first hole and out the bottom. And then I'm gonna take it from the bottom and bring it back around to the top and drop it down the third hole. So you can see it kind of wraps around this metal piece in a spiral motion, just like that. So now I'm gonna take my thread and go from behind this metal loop, push it through, and then I'm gonna go around the top of this first one and just slip it in between those two tension discs till it pulls all the way through to the middle of them. And I'm gonna bring it back to, around to the outside of this one down here. And I'm gonna pull it through from right to my left and then bring it up and around that one, bring it back down to the right side of this last big one and go around the bottom and then on here you got to pull all the way up until that little pin makes a click sound right there and then it needs to go inside of this of that little metal ring and then that little eyelet from my right to my left and then I'm gonna go through this down this one and then there's a little bar with a tension screw here you just need to go underneath it like that and then down through that loop as well. The one part that's really easy to forget is that you have to go through this last little loop right here, just above the needle. Drop it down there. Now you always thread the needle from, from left to right. And once you get it through the needle, pull it through. To load the bobbin, hold it in front of you and make sure that the thread is cascading off the left side and then drop it in, go in that direction. So that if you pulled the thread, the bobbin would turn counterclockwise. Then drop it in, drop that latch, and then you wanna pull the thread through this tiny little slot right there. Pull the thread through that tiny little slot, and then we need to create an opening right here. So I'm going to turn the hand crank just a little bit so that I can pull the thread through that little gap and then close it back up again, so just to get it out of the way. Here's the tricky thing about this machine. Every bobbin case has a little notch that the thread needs to fall into, but it's, almost impossible to reach with this machine. All the other ones I had were pretty easy, but, but this one's a little bit tricky. So the way I do it is just take something pointy, like I'm gonna take my thread snips and just hold it down there so that there's something for the thread to pull up against and then just push downwards a little bit until you hear it click and fall into the little uh, notch that the thread's supposed to go into. You'll be able to tell that it's in there because there's a little bit of tension on it. So now you've got your top thread coming out your needle out the right side and you've got your bobbin thread all in the right place. 
Now what you're gonna do is lift your presser foot all the way up and drop the needle just about halfway, just so you can see that little loop coming out. You'll just wanna pull that loop out to get it underneath the presser foot. Then with your hand, you're just gonna keep a little bit of tension on that top thread, and as you drop it down, it's gonna pull that thread all the way around and hook it on your bottom bobbin thread. And as long as you have a little bit of tension on this one, it'll pull, it'll loop it right through and you can grab it. So now we've got, so now we've got our top thread coming through the needle and we've got the bottom one fed right from the bobbin through the feed dog. And that's it, you're ready to go after that. All right, in order to wind the bobbin, you're gonna take it up through that same hole and back down to this post right here. You're gonna come through the first hole from the back and wrap it around to the back side again and pull it through the front on the second hole. Then you come through this metal loop here and down through the tension discs. You can go back through the hole again just in case you need a little bit more tension. Slide your bobbin on in and then thread it right through one of those holes. And then you can snap that down because that's what engages that shaft to, to turn. But before you do anything, make sure that you pull your thread out from your needle because you don't want to be dropping that thread down in there if you're not actually sewing something, it'll just get jammed up. So then just keep a little bit of tension on that tail and just start turning. After you've gone a few turns, you can let go of that and even snip it off and it'll just keep rolling. Because I have this reducer on, it goes quite a bit slower than most industrial machines. So it takes a little bit longer to wind a bobbin, but it's not bad. Um, if you think ahead, you can have this all wound up and ready to go so that as you're sewing a project, you're actually winding one up at the same time. So this machine's a little bit different. Most industrial machines will just have one of these little uh, tension knobs to adjust. There's two of them here, and um, you're just gonna adjust them at the same time. So if you do a quarter turn to the right on this one, do a quarter turn to the right on that one as well. It'll just keep the tension nice and even. The reason that there are two on this machine is actually very useful, because if you're going to run much thinner thread, like anything below around 92, then you're gonna take it from off of this tension disc down around this one and completely skip this one up here and just take it directly to this bottom disc down here. Having this second one up here allows more tension without having to just crush the thread with the adjustment. Um, so when you're using thicker thread, that's really useful. So anything thicker than like, so any thread, I would say, I don't know, this is just speculation on my end, but anything like 92 and above, I would probably wind it through both of these discs and just adjust them evenly. It's not a huge deal. It's actually very useful if you decide to use different size threads. I think that pretty much covers all the basics for that machine. If you have any questions about it, let me know. I'm gonna finish up sewing this little batch of 54s and uh, head inside. It's been good hanging with you guys today. Before we wrap this up, let's read some comments. Okay, this one's from Paracore. He said, it's so hard to sell your work when you're not allowed to have social media. Parentheses, I'm still in school. Yes, I'm this young and I enjoy doing this. <laughs> That's so awesome. Uh, this one's from John McLean. He said, what about semi-custom? Card holders in corporate colors or monogrammed? Would you have a minimum order or just say no? Oh, definitely say yes to those. If you can work out a custom deal where you have a minimum order of like 25 or 50, then you're in good shape because that's because that's just enough to where you can still order dies, still maintain your regular process, um, still have a good margin. Um, it's gonna be a big enough order where you can justify the time that goes into developing the product, uh, especially if it's a product that you already make and it, it just needs a little tweak, like a color difference or a monogram or something. Those are big money makers and I'm always on the lookout for that type of work. If there's any of you out there in a corporate position that are looking for some really cool gifts for your employees or your clients, um, hit us up, I'd love to do that. All right, it's getting late. I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching guys, bye. Since I'm kind of fighting the light right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a little walk with these guys. It's just a beautiful night. Gotta enjoy it. You guys wanna go for a walk? Let's go. High five. Let's go for a walk. Hi, Pooch. Daddy, catch her! You're being brave, sweetie. I know. High five. I'm proud of you for getting back on the horse. Don't pretend you're sorry.